name of Jesus, as kingdom citizens, your sons and your daughters, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And into your courts with praise. We are thankful to you. And we bless your name. We know that you inhabit the praises of your people. So we lift up our voice and praise. And adoration to the high God. To 
for his grace and his mercy. If it wasn't for his love covering you this week. Come on, give God a shout that he deserves. Lord, we bless your name. Somebody give God some love. He's a great God. Oh. 
him on a great day. Hallelujah. But we are declaring that there is power in the name of Jesus. So we bless God for each of you that have joined us this morning. We know you could have gone anywhere else, but there was an appointed time. There was a point in time in your destiny for you to show up at 2532 West Stark Street where there's some crazy worshipers and praisers in the house. No, 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 no. There are some ridiculous praisers and worshipers in the house. Because we know we don't do this on our own, but it's only by the grace and the goodness of God. Hallelujah. So to our first time guests, we welcome you on behalf of Bishop Alvin Stewart, our chief apostle and senior pastor, chief apostle of the Alarm Eagles Connection and the pastor of this house, and myself, Pastor Lisa Stewart, the entire Covenant family of Alarm. We welcome you, yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We thank God for you. Holly, we want you to fill out that guest information card, and we want to say thank you for worshiping with us today. Hallelujah. We are a whole man ministry. Let me tell you a little about us. Hallelujah. We believe if God is concerned about your spirit, soul, and body, that's what we have to, we have to go on. So we teach those principles, and we dominate in every area of our life, not just in these four walls, but there are great people in this place that go out and take territory for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So I want you to fill out that guest information card. Give it back to the usher. Give it back to the greeter. And we want to say thank you for worshiping with us. And don't let this be your last time. God bless you. Amen. Don't let this be your last time. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. This is a part of our service. You can... You can play a part in, because when the word comes, if it, if it resonates in your spirit, we don't have any bounds on you. You can tell the Lord, thank you. You can tell the Lord, amen. You can say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear you speaking to me. Amen. I hear you, God. And not just hear you, God, but I hear, I know what you're going to do. So I need you to stand up in, on your feet. And this is Speak Lifetime in the Sanctuary. To our first time guests, this is a meet and greet. This is an opportunity. The Proverbs 18 and 21 said, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. And you got to eat the fruit up, so you got to make a choice. It's a choice. So we made a choice to speak life. Hallelujah. Speak life. Hallelujah. When things seem like they're dead, we speak life. Hallelujah. That's what God wants us to live with, live by. We speak life to it. We speak life to our dreams. We speak life. Hallelujah. Some of us are in careers that we spoke years ago, and now it's manifested now. So I need you to speak a word of love, a word of life. Greet somebody. Move to the left, to the, to the right, and greet somebody today. You can take selfies if you want. You can post them on social media. And to our online audience, good morning. Good morning, Alarm Family Online. Good morning, Alarm Guests Online. Good morning, wherever you are, we welcome you today. We pray that God will meet you at the point of your expectation, that he will do something mighty and powerful for you today. May you know that God is with you, that he'll never leave you, that he'll never forsake you, but he has the best for you. Glory to God. And the rest is yet to come. Come on, come on, greet somebody.
to come out to our family movie night on Friday. Yes. yes. Sister Kwan, how was it? You know, I might be a little bit biased, but it was so fun. It was awesome. so amazing just to see everyone having a good time, laughing, a little bit of crying. You know, I heard uh, Minister Cooper almost got kicked out, you know. Mm. Right, right. <laughs> That's, you see he's not in the place today. No. Right, right. Sound about right. But yes, we are so glad that you all who were able to come had a good time. And we definitely look forward to more flicks and fellowships to come. Yes. Awesome. So as you all know, last week we did not have our recharge because of the weather. I know, sad, right? So, but this week we will have it this Wednesday. Yes, it's back on. Right. So again, we are on our topic of Salah. So what Salah is for who... Those of who do not know is singles enjoying life abundantly in holiness, as well as our marriage made. It is so wonderful. It's so transformative. If you do not have the book, please get it. It will change your life, and it's a digestible read, okay? Amen. And like um, Sister Kwan said, Salah will be meeting in the sanctuary, and ministry mates will be meeting over in the fellowship hall. So for those individuals that are married, we want you and your spouse to come out to learn on how to communicate effectively. So we will be meeting at 7 p.m. in the fellowship hall. So bring, bring your spouses. You know, we're getting some good nuggets over there. Yes, yes. And then also for the end of April, so on Saturday, April 27th, everybody say it with me, Saturday, April 27th, we have our bags of blessings, right? Yes. So we are able to uh, just give back to the community, and also we want volunteers, so we are encouraging you to come on out at 8 a.m. Saturday, April 27th. So who's going to come out? Who's going to try to come on out, okay? I, I see you. I see you. I see you. Yes, thank you so much. And then bring others as well. Also on April, Saturday, April 27th at 12 p.m., we have our ushers and greeters interest meeting, all right? And as I always say, if you love, you like people, and you like to show it with a warm hug and a beautiful smile, please come on out to that interest meeting on Saturday, April 27th. What day is it? April 27th. What day is it? Saturday, April 27th. All right, and also to end out the month, we will have our Collegiate Education Sunday. Yes, so for those of you who have graduation announcements, any accomplishments that you would like to share, please submit that information so that we can recognize and honor you because, you know, you're doing good things and we want to be able to talk about those things amongst your covenant family. And along with that Sunday, we will also be Youth Sunday. So we want to make sure that we are here, ready to encourage and love on and support our youth because we know every time they come together and minister before us, they do an amazing job. So we just want to make sure that we are in the place, ready to support them. So if you all could go ahead and stand back on your feet as we go back into worship. Stand on up, stand on up. Yes, yes. 
All right. So you know what I'm about to do. And you know that it's a great time to do it, right? So we do not do sun, just church on Sundays. But we do church, not just church on Sundays, but we do what together? Life together. But we do what together? Life together. One more time. But we do what together? Life together. Amen. God bless y'all.
30 seconds. If you will, just open your mouth and begin to worship the Lord. Come on, begin to worship the Lord. Father, we want more of you. Father, we must have more of you. Father, we need more of you. Come on, come on, open your mouth and worship him. Come on, fill the room with worship. Come on, fill the room with worship. If that's your heart desire, open your mouth. Fill the room with worship. Father, we need more of you. Father, we need more of you. Father, we need more of you. We got to have more of you. In a changing world, we got to have more of you. In a dying world, we got to have more of you. Somebody open up your mouth and just worship the Lord in this place. Come on, open your mouth and worship the Lord in this place. Let the redeemer of the Lord say it today. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory, give you glory. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. The Spirit of the living God, we do thank you for another day that you've given us to come together to give glory and honor to your name. You told us that there's no other name greater than the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we stand today and we honor the name of Jesus. We thank your Holy Ghost. Have your way in this room today. Meet the need of every man and every woman in this room. Speak to our hearts today. Cast the devil out of our minds. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You cannot have our lives, you cannot have our families, you cannot have our bodies. And so, Father, we thank you that your blood prevails. Father, there's a hunger down in our soul uh, that we need more of you. So, God, feed us until our cup overflows. In the name of Jesus, let there be a worship and a praise that breaks out in this room today. Speak to us today. Have your way today. Lift your people today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you. Clap those hands and give God a triumphant praise. Come on if you will. Hallelujah. Well, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor whatever you do today. Don't stop the flow on this road. I need God to do something in my life today. No, really tell your neighbor, I need God to do something in my life today. I'm expecting it today. If that's you, clap your hands and give God praise. While we're standing, if you will, Get your kingdom constitution. We want to go into the word of the Lord. I believe God wants to speak to us today. I don't think by accident that you're here. I believe that you're here because God ordained it. And since God has ordained it, we want to receive of the Lord today. Amen. We want to make sure our hearts are open to receive from the Lord. I want to thank God for the minstrels today. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate them. 
they, they didn't know, but thank God. First, I want to say thank God for those that are streaming, that are um, online today. And I want to welcome you to in-person service. Whenever you get a moment, you can come to worship with us in person. Amen. Amen. Because there's something about the assembling yourselves together with the saints. Amen. Is that all right? And so I believe God is going to speak to us today. Well, minstrels didn't know that I was going to be talking about, Lord, there's more. I don't know in your life, I don't know if you've ever been to a place in life where you felt like there should be something, something else. There, there got to be something else to this. And sometimes you can't explain it, but there's a hunger on the inside. And most times we try to overlook the hunger and displace it to be something else. But sometimes it's the wooing of God trying to get you to come closer to him. Has anybody ever felt that before God just tugging on you to come closer? He's not asking you um, to have everything right. He just wants you to obey and come. That's what he's asking us to do is to come. And so today I want to talk <clears throat> just for a moment from the thought there is more, there's more. I'm, I'm just convinced there has to be more. Okay, y'all ain't saying nothing. that. That just has to be, there has to be more. Because every time I read my Bible, I'm seeing some more. And I'm like, God, if, if it's in your book, why, why am I not seeing the results, you know, that's in your book? Why are we seeing too many um, sick bodies? Why are we seeing too many things happening in the earth? There has to be more. That, and, and, and somebody has to be hungry for more. Somebody got to get tired of just the normal way of things and just say, well, this is what we do. We get up on Monday, we do this, we do this, and then Sunday, this is what we do. No, but there has to be something deeper. Somebody say, Lord, take me deeper. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 6. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 6. I won't be long today. I just want to talk to people that's serious about getting more of God, more of the presence of God, being in his presence and just enjoying his presence and just being a conduit that God can use. Anybody want to be used of the Lord? Amen, amen. Just want to be used of the Lord. Matthew 5 and 6. If the media will help me, Matthew 5 and 6. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. It's not a question whether or not you'll be filled or not. The question is, are you hungry or not? Because it's a promise that if you're hungry and thirst, after righteousness, he said, you shall be filled. You be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> Miranda, since 2021, I, I've been faithfully and diligently working on a healthier me. Um, wanting to live better. Um, um, understanding that my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And if I'm going to be able to carry the Holy Ghost, I had to do something about my body. Amen, somebody. But I found out um, in the process was just because there uh, was nutritious food or um, better food choices, initially, I didn't have an appetite for it. <clears throat> Wait a minute. I, ha I, 
I, I, I knew I had to do something. And the answer was there. But I didn't have an appetite for it. If I wanted to um, 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 reach the goals and live a healthier lifestyle, I had to acquire an appetite, watch this, or taste for something better. Mm -hmm. Touch somebody and say something better is coming to your life. No, you didn't get the right neighbor. You got to tell them something better is coming to your life. Um, because upon, uh, based upon your appetite, um, what supernatural encounters are you demanding of Holy Spirit to break out in your life? Mm -hmm. Clayton, you may want to write this down and, 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 and share this on your I, I, iPod or whatever y'all got, you know, whatever you want to do. And, um, but Clayton, you may want to write this down. Um, what you crave is your inheritance. What you crave. Because some of us have some crazy cravings. What you crave, what you are hungry for, will be your inheritance. In this very moment on the calendar of God's mind, we have an opportunity to become the very expression of his kingdom in the earth. But we must take note of what we are hungry for. Examine your own life of the things that's occupying your mind, occupying your time, occupying your energy for whatever you crave. That is your inheritance. Are you hungry for more of God? Psalms 40, 42 and 7 says deep calls to deep. I charge you to take note of what you're hungry for. Take note of what you're always eating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Take, take note of what you're always watching. Take note of what you're always listening to. Because if that is the case, then that tells me what you're hungry for. Take note of it. Take note of it. Take note where you spend your time. Don't be so hungry and thirst for the things of this world because those things are temporal. They don't last. They don't last. The Bible says that everything is failing except the word of God. It's, it's, everything is just going down. Look around you. Everything is going down. And the only sure foundation we have is the word of God. Amen. Not your favorite song. Not your favorite actor. Not your favorite food. That's all failing. The only thing, the only sure thing might say it's a sure thing. It's a word of God. It is the only thing that will last in troubled times. Amen. We got to get the word. So everything is failing. So we have a great opportunity to be the very expressions of God in the earth. But when you seek him and his righteousness, things will be added to you to fulfill your purpose and your assignment in the earth. One thing about God, he, he gives us this provision in his word. We got this guarantee in the word if we seek him first. It's dangerous 
to ask God to get into something that you've done 90% of. Oh, y'all ain't said nothing. It's dangerous. You don't done 90% of it, and then all of a sudden you want to say, now, Lord, bless it. You say, you don't want me to bless that because you've already done it without my guidance. We need the Lord to guide us. He said, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Anybody that's seeking righteousness, you always go to God first. You always honor him first. He's not last. He's first. Lord, is his job for me? Lord, should I move? I know y'all ain't saying nothing because some of y'all look at the lights of the big city and your friends say, if you come here, we can get you the hookup. But that may not be the hookup that God wants you to have. Lord, where do you want me? What region do you want me to live? Lord, what you want me to do about this job? Do I take that promotion? They say they're going to give me more money. No, no, run behind money. Seek him. I wish I had a real church here. You ought to high five somebody and say, make him first. Make him Make him first. Make him first. I love you, but God is first. I appreciate you, but God is first. Thank God he put you in my life, but God is. I wish I had somebody that really appreciate God being first. Just clap your hands and give him a praise. I won't be long. got to put him first put him first he has to be first and your friends are looking at you crazy like child what you make up your own mind no 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 I'm gonna make my mind up after I hear him after I hear him my mind is already made up I'm gonna obey him whether or not you ain't, you've never seen it done like this before, that's okay, but he say do it. I don't care if you've ever heard it before and whether you've seen it before, I just got to do what God say do. Yeah, all y'all ain't saying nothing. Look at somebody and say, I got to do what God says do. And so the deep calls to the deep. I won't be long. The deep calls to the deep. Are you hungry for a more excellent way? Are you longing for a deeper relationship with God? Do you have an appetite for greater revelation and influence on behalf of the kingdom? Are you hungry and thirsty for an authentic outpour of the presence of God? Watch this. With tangible miracles. Are you thirsty for more righteousness, uh, for more moves, more moves of God, for your own personal revival? Are you hungry for the power of God to flow through you, flow through your bloodline that will cause salvation to hit everybody in your bloodline. Are you that hungry for God to do something that has never been done in your life before? Yes, I've been saved. Yes, I've been in the church for 20 and 25 years, but there's still more of God that I must experience. There must be more of God that I feel in my life. There has to be more. There has to be more. Hallelujah. There has to be more. There has to be results. I don't want to keep serving him and don't see nothing. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, now I ain't talking about your house. 
I'm not talking about your car. I'm not talking about your money in your bank account. I'm not talking about any of that. Because he said those things will come when you seek him first. But I'm talking about, have you ever had an emptiness within yourself? I think sometimes... Um, when people say they're lonely, they don't have no friends, they don't have this, and they don't have that. Sometimes it's just an act of God trying to get your attention because you lean too much on people. When God wants you to lean, huh, lean on him because people have the tendency of dropping you. But God will always uphold you. Sometimes when you feel like you're in it by yourself, it's God just trying to say, you better come on to me. Hallelujah. You may not know it, but we're in trouble. The world is in trouble. And we need a savior. Uh, I thought I was in the real church. Look at somebody and say, we need a savior. Mm -hmm. We need somebody to save us from this mess. Because mm, we got a mess on our hand. And the only one that's going to bring us out is the Lord. Amen. Things are hitting us every hour. Hitting us, popping up on our phone, popping up on this, popping on that. And if you don't have your mind stayed on him with some of this stuff, you'll go crazy. Stop believing stuff that you ain't got no business believing. And some of y'all crave for bad news. I know you're sitting there saying you the devil but the truth be told some of y'all crave for bad news because that's how some of y'all get high okay, okay y'all don't like my kind of talking because some of y'all get high on bad news it, it ain't juicy until it's bad you ain't heard nothing until it's bad but the bible says he come that we may have life because when you start seeking after God, he start pouring life in you and you can't help but pour life in somebody else. And I'm telling you, in this hour, you've got to get a company of people that know how to pour life into you. Somebody that know how to speak the word of God over your life. Stop talking doom and gloom and give me a way out through the word of God. I need somebody that know how to praise when I can't praise. Know how to pray when I can't. Nudge your neighbor and say, can you praise him right now? I just need a little help. Come on, get your another neighbor and say, can you praise him now? I just need a little help. God's working on something in me. God's doing something in me. See, you don't need people that'll make up their mind whether or not they're going to praise. You need somebody that know how to jump in and just say, I'm going to praise him anyway. Praise him because he's been good. Praise him because he's been kind. And if he doesn't do anything else, he's already done enough. Y'all sit down. You ought to tell your neighbor, don't get me to testify. Because he's already done enough. It'll take me a whole month to tell you all that God has done for me. Check your neighbor again. Say, come on. Can you give God one praise? One praise. One praise. One praise. So the Bible. 
See, y'all don't know, but praise is a mystery. That's why the devil don't want you ever praising. Because he understand, because remember, he was a chief, a musician. So he understand the power of praise. So he don't want you to praise because he knows if you praise him, God will turn things around. If you praise, God help me here. Look at somebody and say, I feel a turnaround. I feel God shifting. Say for 30 seconds, help me praise him. Look at somebody and say, it's getting better now. I feel it getting better now. What the enemy meant for evil. What the enemy meant for evil. God is turning it around. Somebody say, turn it around, Lord. Turn it around. Y'all sit down. Let me teach this. Whatever, touch your neighbor's I day to shout glory. You didn't get the right person because there should have been a wave. Touch your neighbor's shout glory. So whatever, mama, whatever you crave, whatever you crave becomes your inheritance. Sit down. Let's take some more notes. Sit down. <clears throat> whatever you're hungry for, he said, those who thirst and hunger after righteousness, they shall be filled. Somebody shout, feel me, Lord, feel me. So we have to learn just in how to stir up our appetite. We have to learn how to stir up, change our appetite, stir up the gift of God within us. We have to know how to keep the fire burning on the altar. You, you, you need... You need some friends around you that know, knows how to intentionally start a fire. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My wife is good. She'll walk around the house and um, on, put on, that, on the big TV. she be playing that gossip music. Then all of a sudden, I walk in the kitchen to get me a little something to drink. She leaning on the counter. Now, I went in there just to get some water. But because she's so shikanda, because I want more of God, I can't just get the water. I got to join in and say, Shekamansa. You ain't the only one getting, getting ready to get filled. I need the whole house on fire. I need the whole neighborhood. Now I'm talking about if you married to somebody that know how to keep a fire burning, wake up in the middle of the night. Lord, I wish she go to sleep. Then the Holy Ghost start touching you. And you start talking about, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Somebody say, Lord, give me some friends that know how to start a fire. I don't want to talk about foolishness every day. 
I need somebody to talk about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me. While I'm walking to class, thank God he gave us legs now. We ain't got no car yet, but we sure got strength in these legs to walk to that class. I just feel like, oh Lord, they ain't ready for me today. You need some friends that don't mind, don't mind starting a fire. Riding in the car, somebody just say, Sheka. She under. Come on, Holy Ghost. Y'all look at your neighbor and say, Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Y'all get my grandbaby. went to praise Somebody shout Jesus. Let me hear it. feet to praise it. I dare you to tell your feet to praise it. God bless you. Hurry. Now let's hurry. Let's get to the next scripture. And so there has to be, there has to be a hunger. Somebody say, I want more. Say, Lord, I want more. Say, Lord, I got to have more. I'm hungry for more. I'm thirsty for more. Clap your hands and give him praise. And so whatever, whatever you crave, Whatever you're hungry for. Well, if Doc is if Doc gonna praise him, somebody let help Doc Cooper praise. sit down. As long as you don't say hallelujah, as long as you don't say glory, we're going to be all right. As long as you don't say praise it, 
As those of you don't call his name, we're gonna be okay. I just need you to sit down for about 30 seconds. Ow! Say, sit down, please. Sit down, please. Sit down. Sit down, please. Some of you don't know that this week you're going to walk right into victory. You're getting ready to walk right into victory. Somebody, one last time, clap your hands and give him glory. Hallelujah. Amos. Amos 8. Let's go to Amos 8. Somebody shout, there is more. There is. There is more. There is more. You need somebody in your company that, no, that, that just, that, that's just ridiculous. That's, that's not on reserve. That just know how to start a fire at just a thought. I just thought about how good he was. I know I'm asking him for this, but I thought about what he did last today. Amos 8 and 11. It says, Behold, Amos 8 and 11. It says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine, watch this, of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Mm. He said, there's a famine coming. There's a famine coming. It's not a famine of thirst and hunger, bread and water, but it's, 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 it's a famine for hearing the word. In this text, God is using the metaphor um, um, of extreme hunger, which is a famine to describe um, the way people are going to desire the word of God and the presence of God. When he speaks um, through the prophet Amos, he is warning the people who were rejecting the word of God and the promise of God that a time is coming when they will desire the word of God and not hear it. Mm. Now, I personally believe this scripture speaks to us today. As the word of God is shared throughout the airwaves like never before. Although we can download it, it can, it's on television 24-7. It comes in daily words. We must still develop a hunger for the word of God and being in the presence of God. When there is a famine, people do not look for food or taste. Or uh, they don't look for the taste of how food is. They, they don't look at the smell of the food. Mm -hmm. In times of famine, people look for food to survive. This is how God's word must be to us. 
we must maintain a discipline to stay in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. I said a discipline to stay. Because what most of us do, we visit his presence on Sunday. But the rest of the week, we don't know him and he don't know us until trouble comes. But he's looking for somebody that will create a discipline just to stay in the presence of the Lord. Our daily survival, Michaela, de depends on what we're feeding our spirit. What's feeding you every day? Your daily survival depends on the word of God. Hearing the word, reading the word, meditating on the word, studying the word, gaining understanding of the word, and speaking and declaring the word. This, this, this approach, we have to take this if we plan to be in the presence of God. Now watch this, and we have to be intentional. Intentional. This is what I intend to do. You're intentional about everything else. I don't lost half of the church now. You're intentional about everything else. So why aren't we intentional about the things of God? We got to be intentional. Got to make a plan. Amen. Got to have a plan and follow your plan. This is what I do every day. I got a plan. My wife know what I do every day because I got a plan. That's my schedule. I've been doing this for almost 20 some years. This is my plan. So if, if you want me to do anything with you, you got to do it around my plan. Because I ain't adjusting my plan. I don't lost half for y'all. So he ain't going to do that for his wife? No. I know that's tough medicine, but I've been doing this for 25 years. And because I've been in the presence of the Lord with this plan all this time and it's working, don't ask me to abort it. If anything, strike a match up under it. If you know I like to read my Bible outside, bring me a glass of lemonade. Say, let's make this comfortable for you. So you get what you need to get so you don't lead me astray. See, y'all don't like that kind of medicine. Hmm? Come on now. And so this is our survival. This is our survival. Because whatever you feed yourself, whatever you feed yourself, that becomes your inheritance. You're the beneficiary of whatever you eat. Whatever you read, whatever conversation you engage, I used I used to laugh at a lot of jokes. Cause you know, truth of the matter, I, I'm from the country, and um, I, I I I had to come um, um, to certain places, to, um, but I'm still a country boy. And so, in the country, that you sit around the fire. And on, on logs and stuff. Y'all don't know nothing about that. And the fi every Friday and Saturday, y'all don't know nothing about that. You know. Sit around the logs and the fire. Somebody over by the tree cooking up something. And while they cooking, the wives in there putting together the sides. You know. And it didn't take much for everybody to bring a little bit. So all, all about 50 folk can eat. And nowadays, you just do enough for you. Because you stingy, don't want to feed nobody, don't want to help nobody. So, so you go out and you get you a $30 meal just for yourself. Now, if you can do it, do it. Enjoy yourself. But like we teach the children, sharing is caring. All right. And so that's what, that's, that's what, we, that's what we did. 
and they used to tell jokes around the fire. I used to laugh. I used to engage the jokes. Now, don't y'all think I've always been saved since I've been saved. Now, now y'all don't know nothing about uh, my uncle used to tell Donamite. Now, I'm through with that. I'm coming back to church. And so we used to laugh. <laughs> Probably me and you about the only two that know about that. The rest of them don't. Come on. The rest of them, you know about it. The rest of them don't know nothing about no, that kind of stuff. Anyway, and so we would laugh. And so I would get to school and, and try to tell the joke. And the joke didn't go over like the old men would tell it. Amen, somebody. And so we would sit back and tell jokes, and we would laugh. But one day I was convicted. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, everything is not to be laughed at. He said, because when you laugh at it, you agree with it. Shh. So that changed my entire perspective about what I intake. Because sometimes we intake stuff, although it's light, it's funny, but we're really saying in the realm of the spirit, we agree with it. Amen. And so we got to kind of watch those kinds of subtleties from the enemy. And so we got to make sure we watch what we eat. Psalms 63 and 1. This is my last one, and I think I'm finished because my feet still want to do something. I was in that house yesterday. I had a party yesterday by myself. Had, had some friends over that I just can't tell my wife about. We was drunk in the spirit. Hallelujah. I ain't have nobody in my house, but, you know, and I'm saying friends in my mind. We, we, we was at the, we in the spirit, come on, we, we, was, we was at the house. I prayed so yesterday. I say, Lord, please, when I get to church, let there be a praise in the house. I say, God, please let there be a praise in the house. And the Lord spoke this so clearly to me. He said, when the people praise tomorrow, he said, I will add speed to their miracle. No, no, no that, not now, not now, not now. Wait, wait. I shouldn't have said it. Not now, not now. Because some things you've been praying for for two years, you've been praying for a year. But God said, everybody that will praise him today, he said he's adding speed to your miracle. He's adding speed to your prayer. Because the prince of the air has been holding up some things that you should have already received. But because it didn't come when you thought it was coming, you let go of your faith. But God said, get your faith back. Not only get your faith back, but lift up a praise. Because when you praise me, I'm adding speed to that prayer. Psalm 63 and 1. And then this is going to be it. This is going to be it. This is going to be this. This is going to be This is going to be it. I just heard the Lord say, I'm making a way. Although they said it can't be done. God say, tell the people, I'm making a way. Let me say it again. He said, I'm making a way. It looks dry, but I'm making a way. It looks difficult, but I'm making. I wish.
Would somebody just give God a 30 second shout? 30 second praise. Somebody shout, make a way, Lord, make a way. Come on, say, make a way, Lord, make a way. Make a way for my children. Make a way for my grandchildren. Make a way for my neighbors. Make a way for my church. Make a way for my family. Somebody shout, Lord, make a way. Psalm 63. Psalm 63, God, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see the power and the glory. Somebody say, I need to see the power and the glory. Somebody say, I need to see the power and the glory. So as I've seen there in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Mm. Mm. I need to see his power. I need to see his glory. I need to see results. I know he's with me. But to make sure those that's watching my process, I need God to show up so they'll see the results of the glory of God. Amen. And so we understand this is a mystery. He said, my soul thirsts for thee. David is telling us that every component within his within himself is participating in his pursuit after God everything in me everything in me everything in me everything in me is participating my flesh longest for thee he said early in the morning will I seek thee in other words what he said there's a specific time that I wake up or a specific time that I commit to God there's a specific time, specific time that I give to God and I go before God. He said, early will I seek thee. Early will I seek thee. So if he said, early will I seek thee, there's a part that sometime it may be too late. He said, early will I seek thee. If, if I'm waiting midday or when something happened, it's too late. Because I won't be able to see the fullness or gain the fullness of the Lord, watch this, throughout my day. So he said, early in the morning will I seek thee. It's something about getting up early in the morning, being in the presence of the Lord. E even this new age stuff that they teach, they teach you to get up in the morning, um, yoga and all that stuff, get up early in the morning and, and, and have um, 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 no, um, 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 let the positive energy. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Early in the morning, let the positive energy, you know, come and just strengthen you. Amen. They're, they're using a principle without giving Christ the credit. Because the Bible is saying, early in the morning will I seek thee. Talking about the Lord. They're talking about an energy. Yes, we know him to be a force. That's the Holy Spirit. But we don't call him energy. We call him by his name. And the Bible is even clear that every name, they got to bow down. So even the name of energy, Buddha, Muhammad, they got to bow down. So the name of 
Jesus. And that's why if you don't know your Bible and you've not been in the presence of the Lord, you'll bring on that spirit. And the next thing you know, you're worshiping an idol God. Y'all don't like my preaching now. They use biblical references and biblical um, principles without giving scripture reference, without saying Jesus, without saying God, but then you embrace it because you got a little bit of Bible, but you don't have clear understanding. So you embrace something that puts you in a posture where you worship an idol God. And he said, there will be no other God. He said, I'm a jealous. That's why you got to spend time in your Bible. You got to study your Bible. You got to get an understanding of your Bible. You got to get with somebody that know the Bible. Ask them questions. I love my daughter, Paige. She ain't scared. Dad, I was reading my Bible, and I, I like I'm about to fall out like, ooh, the glory. That gives me joy that she's reading the Bible. And certain sections she may not have clarity on, she say, Dad, what the Bible say about this? I, I read this and this, and um, give me some insight and revelation on it. And I said, well, what, what, what you got? She'll tell me. And I said, okay, you're going down the right path, but let's look at this. This is why he put this word there. This is why this word, because in Hebrew, this word means. So then she started telling me, ooh, I'm finna learn Hebrew because it beautifies the text. So what you do, you're pulling on her spirit for what? Deeper. You need people around you that will challenge you to go deeper. You don't need nobody to keep you on the surface. Everybody know God is good, but how good? How, uh, let's go deeper. Let's don't talk about just your money. Let's talk about when you was laying in the bed and the enemy was telling you to kill yourself and then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came on you and you start saying Jesus and the devil had to flee. Let's go deeper. So you need people around you that will take you what? Deeper. We ain't got time to play now because the end is soon to come. Don't be afraid to talk to your family about Jesus. Say his name around him. Let him ask you to pray. Before you go to the family reunion, before you go, to, Lord, let him ask me to pray. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Lord, I know I got uncles and stuff that's preachers and deacons. But Lord, let them ask me to pray. And you get that mic or whatever they got, and you go on and pray and say, Jesus, and pray and, and pray, rebuke the devil. Then all of a sudden, all your cousins that thought you was going to get out there and toots with them, they're going to be looking, uh -uh, don't y'all do that, don't do that. She know the Lord. That's an old one. That's, oh, that's too old. Let me sit down. I'm telling my age. I'm telling my age. Let me hurry. And so, so he said, David, you weren't supposed to do me like that. And so there must be, there must be, there must be a hunger. He said, early in the morning, will I seek thee? There must be a hunger. Mm -hmm. 
Paul said something interesting. Paul said, I count all things but loss for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ, the anointing, Jesus my Lord as his anointing, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. What Paul was saying, I'm willing to give up everything to have more. Are you willing to give up everything? Just give up everything. Give up the way you think church supposed to be going. That's why I tell people, you come over here, you ain't coming over here for no tradition or nothing. You ain't coming over here because they got this and, you know, we got a little, we got structure. But if Holy Spirit steps in, that structure is over. Because we want more of him than we want structure. Folk, don't come to church to hear your, your words if you ain't got no power. Folk want to be in a place where the move of God is. Nothing about no family church. If I'm in a family church and we ain't got a move of God, I got to go where the move of God is. Amen. And so he wants us to stand, please. I'm, I'm through because I, I still feel that on me. Ain't no need. Mm -hmm. But there has to be, there has to be, Freddie, play me some song. There has to be, he, he ready to dance already. I just, I just said, play me something song. There has to be a hunger. You got to thirst for more of God. In every one of our lives, there's an emptiness. From the pulpit to the back door, there's a part of you that's empty. And you've done everything that you could think of to fill it. You tried this, you tried that, you tried them, you did this, you did that. But when it's all over, you're still empty. You got married, thought if I got married, I'll be fulfilled, but you're still empty. You had children, thought if I had children, I'll be fulfilled, but you're still empty. Some of y'all stay in the street so much, just going and doing things, just so busy doing things because you're empty because you don't want to be alone by yourself. Empty. Every person in this room, there's, there's some place in your life if you just be honest, you need God to feel it. You got to feel it. He's not asking you to understand his process. He's just asking you to submit to it. Just submit. Just submit. Because most times people, when they're empty, they always blame other people for their emptiness. But the truth of the matter is, it's not the other person. It's you. Old song, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. This is just an honest moment. Nobody's going to ask you to tell where you're empty. This is just an honest moment. From the pulpit to the back door, there, there are places that God has been trying to feel in your life. But for whatever reason, you've not given him permission. Because <clears throat> most times we think we're in control of our own lives. But our times are in his hands. Our times. Our times. When you get tired, God will still be there waiting on you. That's just how much he's concerned about you. Lord, there has to be more. 
tired of feeling this way, tired of thinking this way, tired of behaving this way, tired of anger taking over me, tired of bitterness taking over me. I'm tired. 30 seconds. That empty place. I want you to lift your hands and worship God. Just be honest in the presence of the Lord. And tell him about that empty place that you need him to fill. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Lord, not another day. I need your presence in my life. I need to know that you're there. Feel me, Lord. Feel me. Feel that empty void. Feel that empty place. I can't even wrap my mind around it, but I trust you to do it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. That's it. Don't worry about your tears. Just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. It's just you and the Lord. See yourself standing before the king. See yourself standing before the king. His arms are open wide. Just to receive you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you today. Father, we honor you today. Feel your people. We hunger and we thirst after you. Thank you for the hunger of your people. Thank you that there's people in this room that's hungry for you, that's willing to live for you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We bless you. Maybe somebody's here today saying, I don't know the Lord. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or maybe you're saying, I once was a believer and I walked away from the Lord and I'm ready to come back. If that's you, I don't want you to wait another moment. I want you to come now. First, let's, let's deal with that. Come now, come now. Don't wait on nobody. Nobody has a heaven or hell to put you. This is the decision that you have to make. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's purpose for your life. There's purpose for your life. There's purpose for your life. Come on, there's purpose for your life. There's purpose for your life. Come on, anybody else? Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Everybody's worshiping. Everybody's worshiping. You don't know him. If it seems as if your spiritual life is dry, your hunger has dried up. Won't you come so we can pray with you? That the gift of God will be stirred up in your life. If you're here, won't you come? Hallelujah. Won't you come? They're coming. Won't you come? Won't you come? Anybody else? You was on fire at a point. And because life happened, you lost your zeal. You lost your fire. You lost your passion. 
We want to pray with you. Won't you come? Won't you come? They're coming. They're coming. Come on, they're coming. They're coming. Won't you come? Satan, loose your hold. The blood of Jesus prevail. The Lord is here now. The Lord is here now. The Lord is here now. Man, the Lord is here. Woman, the Lord is here. If you can, lift your hands and worship. While your hands are lifted, I want you to start praying for everybody with your last name. Pray for everybody with your last name. That God will save your family. That God will deliver your family. That God will set your family free. agreement pray for your family everybody that got your last name pray for them pray for them You will not have our family. The blood covers our family. The blood covers our children. The blood covers our marriage. The blood covers. In the name of Jesus, we thank God. If heaven is rejoicing over one, we ought to rejoice for those that came to the altar. Clap your hands and praise him. I want to run over. Seal me up. I want to run over. God to do something in your life and it seems as if it, it just hadn't happened it's been on hold if you've got a prayer on the altar, lift your hands lift your hands lift your hands Father as the apostolic voice of this house I stand proxy for the people of God that's been fervently praying fervently believing you Father I thank you that doors are opening I thank you that their prayers are being answered Father I thank you that you're giving them keys to access 
in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Answer their prayers. We rebuke the enemy that's been hindering their prayers. And so I stand in agreement with them by the power of the Holy Ghost that results shall manifest. That results shall manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Now earlier I told you the Lord said everybody that will praise him, he would add speed to their miracle. I need everybody in this room, don't wait on nobody. Check your neighbor and say, will you help me praise him? And I need you to give God a ridiculous praise. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Whenever Holy Spirit steps in your situation, he start moving things around. I need everybody that need God to move some things around. Just give God a real good praise. Open your mouth and shout glory. Look at your neighbor say, I'm going to praise God for you. So when it happens, I'm not jealous of your breakthrough. Because whatever I make happen for you, God's going to make it happen for me. Say, excuse me, can I praise him for your miracle? Look at your neighbor say, can I praise him for your miracle? Now both of you give God a praise. look at somebody and say while we're praising supernatural things are happening on our behalf tell them again while we're praising supernatural things are happening on our behalf I need you to go partner with a neighbor and say let's just praise them together get out your seat go partner with somebody and say let's just praise them together Just 
drying up. High blood pressure is being regulated. Somebody pray. Expect a miracle. Wait, 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 wait. I just don't need you to say it. I need you to say it with power and conviction like you believe it. Go to three people and say, any day now, expect a miracle. It won't be long. Any day now, expect a miracle. It won't be long from now. It won't be long from now. Oh. It won't be long from now. It won't be long from now. You ought to get a neighbor and say it won't be long from now.
praising. While you're screaming, you ought to praise it. It won't be long from now. show up in our situation and shut the devil's mouth. Somebody ought to give him glory right there.
still believe it. seconds just love on the Lord show gratitude show honor show appreciation as loud as you can tell the Lord thank you tell him how much you love him how much you adore him how much you appreciate him I know you're sitting next to somebody that believes like you believe so you shouldn't be quiet Open your mouth and tell her how much you love him, how much you adore him. Express your gratitude. Express your honor. Come on, open your mouth. My grandmother would say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? Somebody just honor and worship the Lord. Love on him, love on him. Love on him. Love on him. Love on him. remain hungry and thirst after God. Find time early in the morning to get up to pray. If you start with 10 minutes, 10 minutes are growing to 20 minutes. 20 minutes are growing to 30 minutes. 30 minutes will go into an hour. Sometimes it goes into two hours. Then you have to say, okay, Lord, I'll come back, but you know I got to go to these people's job. But you want to get up early so you can spend time in the presence of the Lord. Pursue him. Don't get so preoccupied with what's happening in the world that the Lord is last. Don't get so preoccupied about what you want. Let me say something and I'm going to close and we're going to receive gifts. We are our greatest hindrance when it comes down to spiritual growth. 
Because we think we know what's best for us. And we have this idea in our head that this is how I want my life to be. And then when you start pursuing God, you find out that you've been wrong for so long. Then you find out all your frustration was just because you didn't want to submit to God. I tell people, and I tell pastors all, all over the world, if you got people in your church that don't submit to you, it's because they don't submit to God. Okay, y'all don't like that. If they don't submit to you, that means they don't submit to God. There's an order to all of this. In this kingdom, there's an order to all of this. Whatever you do, submit to God. Submit to God. And God will work everything else out. I, I, I didn't get no help. I didn't get no help. If you submit to God, he'll work everything else out. It's time to sow into the house of the Lord. Come on, clap your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to pray for me today. I have to preach again at 4 o'clock for a pastor's installation in Gretna, Florida today. And so pray my strength. We don't have a powerful time. Amen. Expecting God to do great and mighty things. I want to challenge every person to get a seed of $70 today. 70 is the end of man, end of flesh. Seven is seven. So get a seed of $70. Sow that seed. Those who are tithing, get your tithe. But everybody in this place, you're sowing your best seed. Get your tithe. Tithe is a tenth of whatever God has prospered you with. Tithe is a tenth of whatever God has prospered you with. God loves a cheerful and a liberal giver. Amen. God cannot bless you if you're stingy. Take care of God first, and he'll take care of you. I wish I had five to say it. I know that to be right. Never eat up all you see. Invest your seed. Sow your seed into the kingdom, and you will always have. Even if you don't have all the money, he'll give you favor. He'll give you influence. He'll give you access. Dr. Mitch, I was praying yesterday and I told the Lord, I said, you told me about three, four years ago that we would benefit from other people's money. And that came back to me yesterday. And God said, in this season, those that will trust me I will cause men to give into your bosom. You won't have to work hard. You just have to pursue hard. Oh, God. You won't have to work hard. You just have to pursue hard. Go after him and he'll take care of you. Take care of everything you need. Amen. Get that seed in your hand and stand. We want to read our, get your tithe in your hand and stand. We want to read our confession. Then we'll let you bring your seed. We're going to read it together, read it out loud. Everybody's standing. Even if you don't have a seed, you stand because I tell anybody, you can't be around here too long without God prospering your life. I know I got that right. I say this is a blessed house. Amen. Let's read our confession together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I renounce fear of the word of God not working in my life. 
I cast out all fear. I live to give and I give to live. Come on, read that loud. Lift that seed in your right hand of authority. I decree a thousandfold return over every seed in Jesus' name. If you're giving electronically, push the button. If you're giving with the envelope, start from the rear, come down, and sow your seed. Amen. Harvest be upon you. 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 Don't forget Wednesday night. You want to make sure you're here for recharge. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be an awesome time. Those that are going with us to um, Gretna, make sure you're there at 4 o'clock. Maybe there's somebody here today saying, Apostle, I want to join. I want to make covenant. I believe this is the right house for me. I appreciate the word. I appreciate the anointing of God that's in this house. If you want to join, make membership today, would you stand? Would you stand so we can receive you? Would you stand? All over this place. Amen. You stand? Amen. Come on. Let's thank God for it. You can stay right there. You can stay right there. She's already talking to you. Come on. Let's bless God for it. Let's bless God for her. Miranda, the young lady right behind you. Amen. Man, I was looking for you. Did you get the word? I've been putting the APB out on you. All right, come on, let's praise God for it. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for all of our first time guests. Thank you for being with us today. We're honored that you've come. Pray that something was spoken to bless your life today. Everybody is standing and hope this will not be your last time. Amen. So, Father, we thank you today for your loving kindness. Thank you for how you minister to us today. Thank you for liberty and praise in this house. We pray for now you'll take us from this place to never your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You are dismissed. Love on somebody and tell them any day now, any day now.